What is going on, Lunatic Fringe? Guys, it's been a few days since we've talked Luna Classic. We're going to check this out because there's a lot going on in the ecosystem right now that you should know about. First and foremost of which, uh, Duquan has won an appeal, and he's no longer being extradited to the United States. Han Cheng Soon, uh, Ju, Ju, Han Cheng Jun, I can't even say it right. Han Cheng, Han Cheng Jun is uh, in South Korea. He's going to be tried for um, fraud, $40 million dollars. Uh, profiting off of fraudulent activities, which I don't know that that's going to, that's really kind of nonsense. That's South Korea is still just looking for, uh, looking for somebody to blame because they need somebody to blame. And of course the clever foils would be anybody who's in that ecosystem, obviously. In the meantime, Du Quan won his appeal, not going to the United States yet. Doesn't mean that it's done. Doesn't mean that he's, he's going back to South Korea, but We'll see how this all plays out, but uh, a lot of things happening here. And in March, they're going to start the trial uh, for uh, Terraform Labs. And remember, Judge uh, Jed Rakoff, uh, 82 years old, uh, geriatric, super old guy, uh, really kind of cucks for the U.S. government and the SEC. So I don't expect a favorable ruling, despite the Terraform Labs might be able to make a really compelling sort of case. Now, Terraform Labs did file bankruptcy so that they can continue doing this and continue buying new assets and continue building their ecosystem. What does that mean for Luna Classic? Well, it's both good and bad because it's the overall sentiment where you can see Luna Classic, uh, you can see that, that, that the company that created it is out here fighting the good fight, if you will, for themselves and for their survival. They're very survival, if you will. Uh, and, and, and that's that's probably going to be great long-term for the Luna ecosystem. But as we've been learning, Luna Classic is under attack from that ecosystem. So uh, where does that leave us? Well, uh, the price right now has been kind of moving, soaring 5%. That's not really soaring, but you get the point. Uh, price prediction says that uh, Lunk aims for point. Uh, 0002 by the end of February. So we're looking about 100% increase from where we are right now. Makes sense, by the way, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, we've got some proposals here. We've got the Global Lunk Burn Program, and you go read this, it's long standing, and you go to station, and of course, the proposal is up here right now. It's not going to pass. Um, look, look, all these people are trying to do at, at this point any taxation other than what happened on Binance, where Binance is burning their own fees. Okay. Uh, anything other than that is not going to fly at this point. Uh, these centralized exchanges, they don't care about the burns. They don't care about any of this. All they're doing and all, all these people are doing is these are a bunch of children trying to get, trying to annoy people and you shouldn't fall for this kind of stuff. Now, uh, despite me saying that I, I clicked the button here and 30% of people are like, yeah, it sounds like a great idea, George. It's not a great idea. This will kill transactions in this in this ecosystem. The way that you're going to fix this is by creating something that doesn't penalize you for holding. And, and I, I really hope that people start to, at some point, that we level up on, on Luna Classic and we start to understand that you know, you, you buy in, you hodl, you're doing whatever it is that you're doing or you're trading. You know, whatever you're doing, you're doing it under a specific uh, a very specific sort of paradigm. And that paradigm is that you send a million tokens, you get paid for a million tokens. You send a million tokens, you get paid for a million tokens. You buy a million tokens, you get to sell a million tokens. You don't get taxed a little bit along the way so that you got to hold just a little bit longer. That's stupid. Nobody does that. Nobody in the top 100, nobody in the top 200, nobody does that, right? It just doesn't happen. So now uh, you, you have to ask the, the, the question further, why, right? Um, and it's just because people are not knowledgeable and it is so good to see that 46% of people have already said no and um, with veto and that 20% have already abstained. Uh, this is not a, you know, this is a ridiculous fight. This is a silly kind of thing. There's no chance this thing passes right at this point. It looks like it, it looks like it's cooked. Now you can change your vote or something like that. But uh, it, it looks like it's a sil it's just a lot of words. And if you come over here, like it's a really fleshed out. It's, it's not it's not that it's not well thought out. It's just that it's going to kill the chain. But here's what's not going to kill the chain. Now that all of these hurdles have been cleared, and the number one hurdle is the compulsory KYC for approved L1 developers. By the way, every other chain has KYC for their development. The only one that doesn't, Luna Classic. Now, why does that matter? Well, it matters because all these people who were voting, all these people, they're hiding behind their presence. And remember, if you follow Happy Caddy Crypto, then you know that a lot of these people kind of popped up in the middle of nowhere around the same time that Luna started their active push to uh, capitulate Luna Classic, where they started um, Moon Rabbit. Remember, they're paying Moon Rabbit, and Moon Rabbit is a validator 
for the Lunk ecosystem. And they're also voting against KYC. They don't want you to know who they are. All of these guys are bad actors in this space. And by that, I don't mean malicious necessarily. I just mean that they're out for themselves. They're not out for you, you the, hod the hodler. You know, somebody has to represent who holds the bag, if you will. And they don't represent that. Or at least um, they represent a, a small group of that. Because guess what? KYC got approved despite massive objections. Almost 100% in the top in, in the top 10, almost 100% of them were like, oh, no, we don't want anybody to know who we are. That's the kind of shady stuff that's going on right there. And you know what they do? They hide behind, well, we just think it's a free ecosystem and that everything should be free and that everybody should be able to uh, live in, in, in hiding and, and nobody's... The, the, you know the drill. You know, you know, and and you know what that means, right? I, I hope you know what that means. What that means is, in case I scam you, I don't want you to catch me. That's what that means. Um, and we talk about it as freedom. We talk about it as, you know, uh, that's you, the trader. That's not them, the people who build. That's not you. That's not them. That's you. You can be anonymous in DeFi. You can be a person who can who can who can trade. But the people who are building. We need to know who the builders are. We need to know who the builders are in everything because those are the ones that have the ability to scam you the most. We have to be protected from them. They're trying to make sure that they're protected from you. And that's bullshit. So, uh, but moving on, <clears throat> Luna Classic price trading at 11,103 right now, up three and a half percent. Broader market just really ripping right now. Bitcoin about to hit 48,000. Uh, ETH maybe 26 pretty soon, uh, but you can see. Uh, we're starting to move along and and look we came outside of this channel in the last two days you know it's been a long standing sort of move up right um but it, it needed a, a spot kind of if you will to to sort of uh give you this idea of how it's going to uh break out and then that i think this kind of you know maybe gave us a little bit better of an idea when we look at the daily you know of course we're seeing this sort of um break but it's coming upward, right? Uh, we're going a little bit sideways right now. You might want to say right here, does that look like a flag pattern to you? I mean, let's zoom in and kind of look at this. Doesn't that look like, uh, you know, we got a nice little spike here in price action. We got a nice little move right here. And now we're creating a bull flag over the 20. Uh, and, you know, when that breaks out, if it goes over the, the 50 and the 100, then, wow, you know, this is the breakout moment, right? Uh, and if that breakout moment happens, uh, we've got a little resistance, which is ironically crossing over the 786. But the 618 at 1500 becomes the next spot of resistance. And, you know, we've already busted through that. So let's bust through it one more time uh, and start making that big move. Now, if that big move comes off of this, which looks a little similar, not greatly, but a little bit similar to this one, this, uh, this flag was coming along and then breaking out. And then we got this bigger flag, which seems to be breaking out. Like if you, if you allow me, this right here looks like this right here. This is the breakout before that big move. Now, if that is the case, then it would be reasonable to assume that, you know, somewhere in this 3000 range is probably where uh, the, the price action would be going. Now, in the meantime, 100% uh, different over here, uh, not looking nearly as strong. Now, the, the, the breakout did happen, by the way, uh, but but you've noticed here that it probably doesn't look nearly as uh, robust. Um, I, I did say, by the way, that this is coming down and continuing to come down, and it doesn't look like I'm going to be right on this one, um, which, by the way, uh, in case you've been, uh, if you've been following for a that's going to be rare. So, so I still feel like we might see something sort of break down over here on USTC. Otherwise, then we could consider that this range right here has been very resilient. Uh, and if it stays resilient like this, then you're looking at least 50x, I want to say, if we repeg. Uh, so, you know, people are hedging uh, against that. They, they think that there's going to be a big move. So, uh, you know, looks fantastic what could transpire here, but I'm still bearish in this moment. Okay. Uh, and I'm uh, bearish about USTC, not about Luna Classic, uh, but I would, and not because I don't have a long-term plan, but my long-term plan involves this thing coming back down here and accumulating a whole bunch more. So, uh, I already got enough here. So, you know, we'll see what happens, but that's, that's my idea. So, uh, but back to Luna Classic, uh, it does look like we're probably going to get a break. And of course, if we get a breakout here, we're going to get a breakout on USTC too. So, uh, but then to close this off, uh, volume starting to kind of dwindle just a little bit, but price action moving up. Uh, not a lot, not aggressively. Same thing over here. Volume starting to dwindle a little bit, price action moving up a little bit. You know, it's, it's, it's the bullish scenario that's starting to play out in the broader markets. And, and Bitcoin probably runs to $50,000 real soon. 
uh, maybe even 58,000 at this point because it's just looking like there's a big target right there. Uh, and then over here, uh, you know, yeah, shout out to Lunk Validators, uh, closing in on 15 billion Luna Classic stake. I mean, there's plenty of stuff going on here as you scroll through some of the, the, the information and notes. Now, uh, you do see Luna Classic Labs out here. They're, they're going a long way, by the way, to pointing out um, all of the bad actors in this space. So if you haven't already, consider giving them a follow. And of course, give Happy Caddy Crypto a follow uh, and Mr. Diamond Hands if you're interested in all of this stuff. But as you go through this, then you can start seeing who the good and the bad validators are, where they're voting. Luna Classic Labs is letting everybody know who the good and who the bad are. These are the KYC uh, people over here. This is where they voted. Uh, Lunkdow, no with veto. Interstellar, uh, no with veto. Moon Rabbit, no with veto. I mean, they went, and by the way, this is a long time ago. Uh, they came in and just said, uh-uh, we don't want people to know who we are. Uh, huge voting power. Do not want you to know who they are. It's absolutely crazy. Um, uh, but then, as a matter of fact, just to just to, to clarify here, uh, you also saw people like Vegas come in here and tell him he shouldn't be doing this. Uh, you are lost. Are you kidding me? Uh, and Vegas, you know. To, to his credit, probably just doesn't want people to know. Uh, but he says, everywhere I look, I see comments about Vegas is scammer. And I observe that your delegators are also coming to me. Is that why you came here? You know, so, you know, we're, he, Luna Classic Labs feels like he's calling out. Now, is he, by the way, I don't know. Uh, but he feels like he's calling out the space and the bad actors in the space. Is Vegas a bad actor? I don't know that to be the case. Uh, but here's the thing. Um uh, these are the people that are voting no. These are the people that are trying to keep you from finding out. These are these are the people who want to continue to to profit off of you without you knowing who they are. Does that sound anything short of ridiculous to you? Because it should. It should sound like what did you just say to me? I just said it. I, I just said these people want to profit off of you. They want to make money off of you secretly, in secret, in private, and they want to vote in their own better interest, not yours. Just think about that. Now, this is my time. So um, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, and, and if you're a good actor in the space, it just happens to vote no with veto because you believe in privacy or something like that. I mean, that's fair enough, but your privacy doesn't extend to creation. It doesn't extend to holding other people's money for your own gain. So you may think that you're a good actor and you may very well be in your heart a good actor, but you're not acting like one. You're not. We know and we understand Luna is looking to actively kill off Luna Classic at this point, that they are actually paying people to be in the Luna Classic space and slowly but surely stifle whatever's going on with Luna Classic in order to motivate people to come back to Luna. And when I say back to Luna, I don't mean back in the necessary sense, but to move all of their Luna Classic to sell it and then to come to Luna because that helps Luna in the long term and Luna uh, to, to its point here is going to be supported by Terraform Labs. It's going to grow its own ecosystem. Uh, pretty soon, Luna is probably going to have a new Terra. Uh, and when that peg happens, they're going to probably peg it to a dollar. They're going to do the same thing they did before. Uh, Anchor Protocol probably comes back in some fashion like that. You know, they're going to build out this really crazy ecosystem. And, you know, they want you to uh, be invested because that helps them because that's how they get you know, that's how they continue to survive and thrive and make money. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. It's not financial advice. My name is Believes Mullins, right? Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll talk to you again very, very soon. We have a giant update from Cryptonomy.finance. Guys, brand new website, Solana. I'm going to earn 26 Solana for this move right here. About 2600 bucks. $2,600 for my tether over here. Uh, the XRP, 2313 Again, these do not unlock for a long period of time. I'm not going to unlock until November, but... Uh, I'm going to have 0.99, one extra Ethereum. Don't know how much it's going to be worth at that time. You never know. Worth nothing might be worth a lot. 0.08 Bitcoin I'll have available at that point. 0.037 Bitcoin over here. And then 0.012 Bit. This launch pool. Now I'm locked in until November of 2024. You can see that my accrued interest so far, 57,281.92. Now you might be asking yourself, like, how are you earning this, uh, Blazes? Because I signed up to Cryptonomy.finance. I just put the money in. I gave myself a shot, gave it an opportunity uh, in the bull run. That's where the money gets made. So I'm going to let this ride for a little while. You let me know what you think.